If I want JSF, what I have to do is I have to actually create an application that leverages JSF and uh, then deploy that to my Tomcat server. And JSF is just a specification. In order to work with JSF, you actually need to have somebody who implemented, J implemented the specification. And so from the JSF project, we've got this 8 meg download. I'm actually going to open up this zip file highlight all the resources and extract it right to the C drive. Let's make sure that there's a, a path here that it'll get extracted to and indeed it will. So I'll extract it all to the C drive and once the extraction is done I'll actually go into my C drive and take a look at where it was uninstalled to so there it is. I'm just going to rename that. I'm just going to rename that underscore JSF 1.2. And now you can see when I take a look at all my different files, they'll all handsome there, right at the top of my Windows Explorer page. Now, when you go to JSF 1.2, you'll see all sorts of fabulous things. You'll see a render kit, you'll see some samples, TLD docs, some Java docs as well. All stuff that's great to have at the tip of your fingertips. But what you really want is this lib directory. And there's a couple of files in here, jsfapi.jar, jsfimple.jar, along with a couple of TLDs files and DTDs. That is the implementation of JSF. And those are the jar files that you need to put in any web project that you're going to work on. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a very simple web project. So on my C drive, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it underscore web root. Now I know some development tools actually make web root uppercase, uppercase W, uppercase R. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it all lowercase letters with a leading underscore. And of course, for every WAR file or J2EE web application, web application archive file you have, they all have to have a subdirectory named webinf. And typically it is uppercase letters. And that webinf directory has a few important directories in it. One of it's called lib, and another one is called classes. Just a couple of the folders that you'll always find inside webinf. And I'm going to put that in the wrong spot. That's got to be right there, right next to the lib folder. And so here we see we've got the lib folder right here in our classes folder. This lib folder has to have any runtime libraries we need in order for applications to work. And really, that includes everything inside that lib directory of the JSF download. So I'm going to open up the lib directory of my web application, which is under webinf, and paste those various TLDs, and most importantly, the JSF API and the JSF implementation impl jar files. There's actually one other thing that can really throw you off here. In fact, all these TLDs and stuff like that, they end up going to need the standard tag libraries from uh, an implementation of the standard tag libraries. That actually won't come with my Tomcat server. So from my Tomcat installation and my Tomcat extraction, you'll actually find a folder called web apps and there's one called examples and in here you'll see a webinf directory of the lib folder. You'll see JSTL and standard jar inside there. You'll actually want to copy those, especially JSTL.jar file, and actually paste them into the lib folder of the webinf directory in your web root. And that will get you started on your way to creating a very basic JSF application. Now the other thing about JSF is that it is just like any other application. It is a, a, a Java-based servlet JSP WAR file. And one of the rules, rules about WAR files is that the WebINF directory of every WAR file has to have a web.xml file or a deployment descriptor. And that deployment descriptor has to describe how all the various servlets and JSPs and security constraints and things like that will run when the application is deployed. Now, there's a messy syntax for using a web.xml file. So I've got one canned here. You'll see there's my web.xml file. I'm actually going to copy that and paste it 
into the webinf folder of my web application archive file, my web roots folder. And I'm going to look at that. I'm going to open that with WordPad. And as I said, you can get one of these little files just about anywhere. See, that's all got to be in there. That's just awful typing out by hand, so it's best to just find sort of a web.xml that's got that off the internet. Um, and then there's a few things you want to have in there, display names, a couple of properties that you can have in there. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, one of the biggest ones, though, is every servlet that your application uses has to be registered in the web.xml file. Now, when we do JSF development, we don't actually develop servlets. What we do is we use a special servlet that's provided to us from the JSF implementation. And you can see that that JSF, that faces servlet, is actually configured to load on startup. It's javax.faces.webapp.faces servlet, just given the name faces servlet, and it's the one servlet that our JSF applications need. You'll also know that this faces servlet, and you see the mapping there, the name, that that faces servlet will respond to anything, notice the little asterisk there, will respond to anything coming in with a dot faces extension. So any request that goes into our web application and it has a, a dot faces extension on the end of it, just like you know before we used to see dot JSP and we used to see dot HTML, um, if we see do this dot faces, this faces servlet will capture that and handle that incoming request and eventually send an appropriate response back to the client. So every JSF up application has to have this web.xml file at the very least. As I said, best to get a copy of that, download it somewhere off the web. You can even find a template in the examples directory of the Tomcat installation. So as you can see, there's a little web.xml file there. Now the other thing that every JSF application needs is it needs a special file named faces config and I also have that in my little sort of prepped and configured war file there's the faces config.xml file I'm going to place that into the webinf folder of my web application and I'm going to open this up and really it's empty without being empty. Um, you'll notice that I've got an entry here for one simple managed bean and one very simple navigation rule. In fact, to be honest with you, right now, I'm actually going to delete everything. I don't need anything in this faces.xml file because I'm actually just going to do a test right now to see if JSF is actually working, if everything is configured properly. But once you start doing some, some heavy lifting with JSF, things like managed beans, so I said we don't create servlets in JSF, but we do create managed beans. Those all get registered in here. And then we have navigation rules that tells the JSF, the Java server faces framework, how to handle incoming requests and, and various different state transitions that might happen from a managed bean. But as I was saying, I'm just going to leave this blank here. I don't want to do any in-depth JSF programming. I just actually want to make sure that my JSF environment is configured. So I'm going to save that. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new text document in the web root folder. I'm going to call it hello world dot JSP and inside this little JSP I am going to I'm going to open it and I'm basically just going to say hello world so I'm going to edit this with edit pad just going old school here sorry word pad I'm going to save that. And as you can see, there is nothing really too significant about this little JSP file other than the fact that it just prints out hello world. So that's how you get started and sort of can set up an environment. The next thing I'm going to do is actually take this web application and use the Java JAR utility to deploy it to the Tomcat server. But that will be the next tutorial.